Hello everyone, I'm Dashan Farad. Welcome to Right and Exact, bringing you issues affecting people of African descent in America and across the world. Today we have with us two very special and phenomenal guests. All of our guests are special, but we definitely are very privileged to have with us an R&B legend, uh, an uh, R&B extraordinaire, as well as an um, excellent uh, producer. We have the very talented Miss Karen White with us, and I'm quite sure women everywhere may remember her uh, as a uh, singing the anthem I'm Not Your Superwoman that came out in the late 80s and of course Secret Rendezvous among other uh, spectacular hits but also on the line with us we have Derek Mohammed, filmmaker, film producer and all around bad man today we're going to be discussing with Miss White and uh, Mr. Mohammed or Karen and Derek a recent movie that is getting ready to be released that is uh, written and produced by Karen White and Derek Muhammad called Gale in the Storm. It is a movie that semi is a semi-biopic uh, about the life of the legendary R&B singer. We want to welcome welcome both of them to Right in His Act. How are you both doing, Karen and Derek? Oh, man, I'm all right, brother. How are you? Quite well. Miss White. I am doing amazing. So glad to be here with you today. <laughs> well, listen, I must say, okay, uh, uh, I must say to uh, uh, Miss White, may I call you Karen? Is that okay? Oh yes, yeah, that's right. okay. Uh, you know, sometimes I don't like to be I don't like to be as formal uh, often. Sometimes on air, okay. But just out of respect, I was calling you Miss White. But I just wanted to say, listen, Miss White, I grew up hearing your songs. I mean, you know, you're a you are all around bad woman. I have to say that you were just phenomenal, but also. Uh, like I said, you know, we, we're, we're very glad that you're uh, doing this project. Uh, so first of all, I want to ask first, Miss White, what inspired you to uh, tell us a little bit about Gale in the Storm? Because I saw the trailer, and from what I've seen so far, I'm very impressed. What's behind that? And then, of course, Derek, you can jump in whenever you feel like it. Oh, yeah. We, we'll do the tag team in here, right, Derek? That's <laughs> right. Well, first of all, we wanted to... Uh we met, I met Derek, and uh, I really love his spirit. I call him Mr. Alchemy because he is a person that will make, uh, you know, take lemons and make lemonade. And um, I was at a point in my career where I was just coming back uh, from the industry. I had I'd taken 17 years off to raise my daughter, and um, I, I didn't really start out to say I'm going to leave the entertainment industry and say 17 years later I'll return. It just kind of happened that way. When I was away 17 years, I was uh, real estate mobile. I was uh, investing in homes, living in them, flipping them, and uh, pretty rehabbing them. And um, I got back into the business, and um, I met Derek, and he inspired me. He was on a journey of you know, wanting to be, you know, uh, an actor, a comedian, um, director. And um, it's like I love when we talk because I think, you know, the most, the biggest thing that we talked about was, you know, there's never, you're never too late to go after your dreams, and dreams don't have an expiration date. So we had that same single-minded focus of, okay, well, we were both late in our 40s at the time when we met, and um, he was just beginning his career in Los Angeles, and so uh, we would we would uh, go to these uh, acting classes, but I met him there, we'd be doing classes, and he'd become my partner scene, and we would write, uh, after we would do our scenes, we would start, you know, writing ideas for web series and everything, and so we, uh, Derek, you could take it from here to where you came up with the idea for Gail and the Storm. Well, you know, wanted to say that first of all, I want to thank Karen because she took a chance on even just being a partner of hers. You know, she worked with all the great ones like Babyface and L.A. Reid. I was I was going to mention Baby and Terry Lewis. I was going to mention right, Babyface you know, definitely, yes, and Jimmy. Right, right, and you know, she was married to Terry Lewis, and, and I'm a huge uh, Jam and Lewis fan. So I was like, good grief, a low walk, but I mean, I'm getting a chance to hang out and be partnered up with Karen White. It was like, wow, man, I must have paid some charity or something. You know what I mean? So I've done something right. So make a long story short, we was like, well, you know, after uh, going on auditions, sometimes you get booked, sometimes you don't. We was like, look, let's just try to come up with an idea ourselves. But the best way to introduce this is you because you have a brand, you have a name, you have a following. So why don't we just create something that your fans would be, 
uh, most interested in seeing, you know, because we're serving an underserved market. But before we even put the pen to the paper, we had we had to come up with a budget idea. Where's this project on the go? So we said we're going to target it to our fan base. And we came up with a budget and then we started writing Gail in the Storm. And it came up with, you know, I think she's a force of nature, uh, Karen. And so I said, well, let's, and it was a hurricane going on, Gail force winds. So I said, let's call the character Gail Storm and we'll just call the band the Storm. And just, we just created a whole, a whole story behind it. And it's really about a legendary funk singer who, who was with a band named Eclipse back in, uh, 80s and 90s and she had a fallen away and when she fell out with her band uh member and lover at the time julian she uh got jaded and she walked away from the industry similar to what karen did in her life and she started doing real estate and then she happened to meet up with a legendary bad boy black ball music producer hannibal shabazz who we patterned his character off of uh, club nouveau's founder jay king all who, right by the way is karen who, by the way, is Karen's manager and how they met. So we just formulated a story and she didn't want to sing. He saw her singing at a birthday party at his club he owned in the movie and he uh, trying to get her to come back. And she's like, doesn't want to. So he said, well, maybe you can help mentor uh, a young artist I have for this band I'm bringing up. And she agreed to do that. And one thing left, this, it, it left a void there because the artist gets signed and then she has to make decisions, she's going to come back. But the movie really talks about rediscovering your passion. And like she said, it's never too old to live your dreams. Dreams don't have an expiration date. And what happens when you call the shots? So we, talks about, we talk a lot about the state of the music industry as well as radio. So, And, and let me say this. She is a beast. I mean, Karen, if you, if you, you will find no one work hard as Karen White. She's a perfectionist. To, to the T. I kind of your level up. I kind of got that. Yeah, we kind of got that. <laughs> Go ahead now. And she raises your level up in your game. So, like, we shot the movie in seven days, and, like, she was to put in 20 hour days. It was 50 scenes, and she recorded the soundtrack in two and a half days while we were filming the movie. Uh, Incredible feat. It's like Dennis Booker World Records here, man. Miss Miss White, you sound like uh, when you say I'm not your superwoman, I think that you contradicted your song. <laughs> I know, isn't that funny? Yeah. I, and I definitely, definitely feel like that. And uh, you know, what I say, what is being a superwoman? It's like you know, stretching, growing, and reaching, and just you know, to all the best parts of yourself. And uh, that's really what I think I, I'm doing. And I love to be a champion for women. And I hope that this movie will inspire, uh, you know, not just in music, but wherever it is that people in their lives feel like they've put down their passion and that, you know, they can, they can, it's not too late, you know? And so that's kind of the message with Gail and the Storm. It's, you know, it's by persevering, you know, even through setbacks. And uh, I love the fact that um, Hannibal and I on the screen, he, you know, the character that he plays, you know, we also talk about, we said radio, we also talk about, there's a documentary portion that talks about, you know, eating and health and, you know, non-GMOs. And I even talk about cream of wheat cornbread. I heard, listen, I saw that, listen, listen up. I saw the, hold on, listen, when you said that, I said she about the quote, how to eat to live. And wouldn't you know it, yeah, I've been studying how to eat to live. I saw that, Sister Karen. Yeah, you saw that, right? I right? Keep the, yes, ma'am. Uh-huh, so, you know, and that's so important because, you know, we, we got to, if you want to go after these dreams, you got to be healthy, <laughs> right? Yes, ma'am. Now, now, listen up now. Uh, now, listen, I must play a scene from, I'm going to play a scene now from the from the movie. And this here stuck out for me. Okay, now this, this whole fast now. I'm going to play this particular scene. And I'm going to give a brief commentary about it, okay? Just stay tuned. Here we go. And this scene here is what's stuck. Oh my God! Come on, man! Out of all the fucking singers in the world. 
Julia. You got to tell her that you got me. Huh? Come on, man. That's a bullshit, Julia. JJ, it could be worse for God's sake. This is where we're at. Right? Okay, okay, listen. Let me tell you one thing. I don't give a fuck what that A&R person said. They're going to love you, Clint, because of our sound. I don't know about you. You gonna, you gonna sit up here and just let her change our shit? Now, I must say, listening to that scene, uh, Karen, Cookie Lion has nothing on Gail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Cookie Lion has nothing. When, when, I, when I saw that, I said, Cookie has, I said, Cookie Lion has nothing on Gail right now. I mean, my, I said, I said now, now, hold on now. This scene here now. Now, Karen, you were mentioning uh, from what I saw in the movie, of course. You know, he said that, well, we don't necessarily need someone younger, but a new face. But I wanted that now, just last month. Okay, first of all, before I ask you my next question, because I'm going to ask you a question concerning age. What I would like to know is, mm -hmm. the, the, uh, both of you, describe this scene here. What inspired this scene? And, and uh, you know, just give me your thoughts about this particular scene. <laughs> I'll let the director go. You go. Oh. Okay, you there? Yes. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. So, all right. So... What inspired the scene really was, it was strategic. You know, Karen is known for singing, and people don't really know her for acting, right? So we wanted to come out the gate, because that's one of the first scenes you see in the movie. And we wanted to come out the gate to let people know, oh, she can go. And it just really sets up the movie, therefore. And the scene really is a depiction of how people would treat you as a star you know you had success but maybe the industry is changing so they try to move you out and bring some younger person in and so they throw away your legacy and a lot of times that's happened to our stars so you know and our people come in they got a new agenda they take over they want to change up things chasing trends so you and know that's, and that's a two-prone approach and i'm glad you brought that up there the reason why which brings me to my next question, what I was going to ask, and I, and I played this particular scene for a reason, not just because, uh, you know, from, from seeing Sister Karen blow up like that, okay, last month, Karen, you had celebrated your 52nd birthday, and just to let you know, I shouted you out on Facebook, you know, and, and I'm not at all surprised, listen up, 50, 51, 52, that is not old, but I'm not at all surprised that you look the way you do, you are a black woman, but I must say, I must ask you, is the industry... If you don't mind me saying, quote, the music industry, is this a young woman's world in the industry? Do you think that, I, pardon me for saying, do you think that older women performers have it more difficult than, say, a younger sister that's coming on the scene, that's seen as being more fresher, more vibrant? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's just uh, the nature of, uh, you know, the industry, the young uh you know, when you're, I was talking to Derek about sales and how, you know, the young people, they don't have mortgages and bills. They, mom, I want this record. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's nothing personal. It's just, you know, business. And so I, I get that. And, um, and unfortunately, it's where we've, uh, you know, the legendary artists, where we feel like we've been thrown away, is that we, we got to understand that the music industry has changed. And, and that, you know, you have to redefine what success is. And I keep telling the legendary artists all the time, and I do a Motivational Monday to remind them success is that we get to do this as a, you know, for a living. And um, the, the gate has changed. The guard has changed. You know, now we don't need a label. I used to be with Warner Brothers. And, um, you know, it's just it's economics. And so that's why we need to build our own platform. And uh, I'm hoping that, you know, now that we have the internet, we can reach our fan base directly. It, you know, it takes work. That's what Derek and I are doing with Karen White Enterprises. It's like reaching your own fan base, training them to buy from you. And um, just not, you know, not really trying to be a part of that world because you can't compete in that. You know, you understand what I'm saying? If, you, yes, if you're going to base your success, that's like one percent, you know. But there's so many people that still love me, that still love my music, and so I'm one of them. I think you I'm just one of them. 
Yeah, thank you. You just got to redefine what success is. And and uh, and that's where I'm excited because this is the business side of me talking. You know, when I left the entertainment industry, when I did real estate, and I understood the business of it, owning your own brand, owning yourself. So coming back, I get my master's back from Warner Brothers, which is a big deal. So I get my original recordings back for all of my hits, uh, I think, coming up on 2018. So, uh, you know, um, that's what Prince had had. He, you know, he just got his master's back before he died. Uh, oh, that's a whole other story. Yes, but, um, so, yeah, so, I mean, I think it's, I'm just, I love the fact that, you know, um, that I'm not waiting on the entertainment industry, sitting back like a sucker telling them, you know, I still have value, you know, because I, I believe I do, I believe I'm better. And, you know, I'm not, that's why I'm not sitting back waiting on them to tell me, you know, I'm going to sign you to a recording contract. Because actually, one of those scenes was inspired in the movie because I got offered this crazy <laughs> contract that was like, this person wanted me, I'm not even going to say the, the, the record label, right, but they wanted me to do like 13 songs for like, Two dollars, pretty much, and it was just like I was like I'd be a dang old fool to sign this contract. I was like I would do it myself. So it's it's it's. Uh, I just have to say that we're just glad we're in this new business, and I don't even I don't even care about what they're doing out there. I, I'm creating. We're creating our own our own uh, uh, lane over here, and, and I'm good with it. Okay, but I must know now. Now back to the film, and I mean, and thank you for that because actually, uh, you just covered what I told Brother Derek that I wanted to discuss. Of course, through the interviews, uh, much of that, and I appreciate it. you saved me a bunch of questions. Thank you. Uh, but uh, okay, now regarding money, regarding the film, financing the film. Now, is is Gail in the Storm being financed out of pocket? Do you have donors, contributors? You don't have to name them if that's the case. But how are you all funding this? Well, God is so good. I mean, we were. This is where, remember I told you about that brother Derek Muhammad with the alchemy? Yes. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't think like the Hollywood system. I mean, his whole, you know, him being in the nation, his, his whole mindset is a whole build your own. So he came to me and I said, you know, what you got dang on right. We should do this. So he's like, we get some college students. We, you know, we're going to, you know, we can put this, we can do that. I said, if you can sell me and you can get all this together, I'm in. So. We, we, I financed it, so it, 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 we didn't have to spend a lot of money. We, like I said, we just used our alchemy. We, 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 we knew how to cast. We knew, uh, you know, we wrote the story, Derek and I, and we got all of the uh, locations in Sacramento from my manager's contacts for free, and it was sheer alchemy, and that's why it feels great, because before, I used to spend like a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000 Three hundred thousand dollars on videos at Warner Brothers, and we spent twenty thousand on this film. So you got to understand when he was talking to me, I'm looking at him like he's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that I can't compete. I don't have that kind of money like Warner Brothers, you know. So I was like, oh, if you can pull this off, <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's do it. And uh, you know, that's why I'm really proud of this little girl in the store making all these waves out here. <laughs> now I must say, there's a particular scene. That uh, that stuck out for me. I, I'm not going to uh, fast forward it right now. We have somewhat limited technology right now at this particular moment. Uh, but there was a scene in which uh, the brother had owed someone money, and the brother had said, "He said the only reason I don't deal with you is because your mother. What is what your mother makes? Uh, uh, what was that? What was he eating? <laughs> porridge or something? Or oatmeal?" And now, apple pie. Apple pie. Uh, no, no. This is the thing. Now I'm going to be honest with you. That scene, even though you know, the, the scene was, was semi-tragic, but to me it was hilarious, I can remember watching it, and when the brother had said, okay, he said, look, okay, I'm going to give you, he said, okay, if you don't pay me the money, I'm going to charge you, a, you know, if you don't give me what you owe me, okay, he said, I'm giving you two weeks, he said, I'm going to charge you $1,000 a day, then he said, after 30 days, you're going to have a new partner, and I'm saying to myself, fair enough, you owe the dude money, good, that means, you know, your club's going to have a new partner, fair enough, you owe me money, I'm going to take over your club, fair enough. But the bad thing about it was, and I said, wow, they're letting them get off that easy? And then as soon as I thought that, oh, by the way, we got to leave you with something, bro. We, you know, and then, you know, broke the brother's fingers. That, that right there, was, I felt sorry for him, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I, I felt, listen, hold on. Whose comedic genius was that? Was that Karen or Derek? Who, whose was that? That's, I mean, uh, well, pretty much Derek. We call that, it was both of us. But 
Yeah. Because I, I know Quirky's probably on the pack, but he's the person who tried. I mean, it's just, we, you tell him, Derek, because this is what we wanted to create now. We call that the legendary pie scene. Go ahead and tell him, Derek. Yeah. The thing is, with the pie scene, uh, we, we wanted to, you know, really, it, it shows how low Hamble had got. So, he, he was the neighborhood bank, you know, and uh, AKA Loan Shark, and the guy did owe him some money. So we came up with that because it was just we we really patterned off of Jay King because at one point he was doing uh, some Shylock business nope. in his life. No comment. No comment. No comment. But go ahead. Right. However, <laughs> you know that 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 whole scene was created out of our uh, our uh, imagination, and we wanted to make it humorous but also uh, effective to let you know to let the viewers know that he was Hannibal was. Charming, dangerous, and funny at the same time. So I noticed that. I, no, no, I don't think like I was on Han I'm gonna be like I said, I was on Hannibal's side during that scene. And then I said, I said, well, I said that because Hannibal, I said Hannibal was getting, I said Hannibal was getting gangster like that, you know. Like, like, but like I said, I knew that Hannibal just couldn't just let him go. I said, oh, we let him go, yeah, let him go. But oh, okay, moving on. Yeah. Okay, but listen. And let me say this. Go ahead and now. Let me say this: the, the henchman in that scene is Samuel Prater. Samuel is one of the lead singers for Club Nouveau. Oh so wow! That was Lou. Yeah. And I remember, I remember Club Nouveau. See, my earliest memory of Club Nouveau was in 1986 when I was nine, when the song when they had did a remake to Lean on Me. Right. Yep. I, I, mm -hmm. and, and also, yeah, and, and why you treat me so bad? Right. That was them too. Right. Exactly. Oh yeah. Okay. Rumors. Look at rumors. Right, rumors. Okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna go on to another subject. Uh, definitely. And before we go on, I just wanted to say to Cameron, listen, Cameron, on your, you know, listen up. When I shouted you out on Facebook and when I hit you up, uh, email asking to do this interview, I didn't want you to think I was being fresh when I asked that we could have a secret rendezvous. I was just doing that to let you know I knew your music. Okay. But I said I hope she don't think. I said I hope she. <laughs> I hope you don't, I said, I don't want to cut, you know, listen, uh, excuse me, sir, whoever you are, uh, I didn't, uh, <laughs> okay. No, I actually said that on a post when I put that on Thursday. Who wants to have a secret running? Well, I got you. No, no, I was, that, that's one of my, listen, that's one of my, like I said, that's one of my favorite hits, period, for, for, of, of any artist. But okay, this is what I want to get, I want to get get into another subject, and I promise I'm not going to keep both of you very long. Uh, Miss White, you at work, you and Derek, Derek is a friend, and you're also a friend of a very talented uh, director, another gorgeous black woman, Sister Stacy Muhammad. And oh, yes. you worked on a series uh, last year, uh, Finding Forever. And mm -hmm. I was so in your favor, and I'm going to be honest with you, not trying to hit on you, I was actually jealous of the brother that was playing your boyfriend, but I, that's another story. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that guy with all the muscles, huh? Talking about, no, no, I'm, no, I wasn't jealous because he had the muscles. I was jealous because he was playing your boyfriend. That's why. But, but, <laughs> no, 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 I wasn't hating on, hating on his appearance. What's his name? Travis Cure? What's his brother's name? But anyway. Travis Cure. Cure, I'm sorry. I, you know what? I said to myself, I wonder if his name is Cure or Cure. But anyway, what I wanted to know is, now, the uh, Finding Forever, it didn't take off as... Uh, it didn't take off the way most of us were anticipating that it would. Because like I said, uh, Stacey Muhammad is a very talented writer slash director. Uh, why do you think that Finding Forever was not as successful as many of us thought that it should have been? Oh, well, that's an easy one. <laughs> well, first of all, we didn't even... What Stacey did was really a trailer. So it's kind of like you pitch people to see if there's an interest. Mm -hmm. And that's what she did, and people responded. Everybody's waiting for us to do it, so it's not that we didn't do it. Uh, we're not going to do it. It's, it's uh, it was it's just kind of like a teaser to what can happen. I understand. I understand. Okay, because like I said, I was like, like no, it, it does. Because like I said, I was, you know, I was actually when Stacy had first put out the trailer, I was one of those that was actually, you know, sharing it on social media. I was pushing for it. You know, I said, oh, Sister Karen White, my goodness, you know, Karen, I said, you know, I was, I was definitely happy to see you, of course. But I said, but Stacy, like I said, she's very talented. And I said, okay, no, I, oh, yeah. I said I gotta help Stacy. I gotta help, but I was pushing it. Okay. Okay, so as listen up, as we get ready to conclude, uh, the both of you, I have two questions. Okay, one for I'm gonna ask Derek first. Derek, if I'm an aspiring 
a filmmaker, black filmmaker, because we understand that, you know, the stakes are, uh, are set so much higher whenever we attempt to do anything. I'm going to ask you, what advice would you have for an, for an aspiring black filmmaker? And my question to Karen is, what advice would you have for uh, an aspiring uh, up and coming black singer, a black woman singer in particular? So, Derek, you go and then Sister Karen. Okay, the advice I have for a filmmaker, first of all, you got to know the business side of movies. You know, um, I'm a student of, of this game. I, I followed uh, Oscar Michelle, who was the godfather of black cinema, and how he did it because we were segregated at the time. We couldn't go in the theaters with uh, white people. He would rent the theaters out after the white people left and, have, and go around town, task flyers out, hand in hand mouth. And, and distributed his movies to black people that he wrote, produced, and directed for black people, uh, uh, produced by black people. Paul Roberson, Lena Horne, Stephen Fetch. So he had a lot of great movies. So to my mindset, what I would tell an uh, up-and-coming filmmaker is have a target audience, have a genre that you specifically for, and network across the board instead of trying to network up. I would be foolish trying to go strictly to Spielberg or Spike Lee or John Singleton. I would want to work with aspiring, like-minded filmmakers on my level and partner up, collaborate, create small budgets. I mean, right now you can shoot a movie on an iPhone. I've done one, a short. And, 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 and find a target market and sell it, and sell it to, to your base. I mean, with the Internet, you can do anything. So you just have to have some vision, some courage, and some cojones, you know? That, that, that's what I would tell him. And stay creative and keep shooting. I like that. I actually like that. Uh, Sister Cameron? Sister Cameron? Sorry, you... let me get off speaker. Yeah, here I am. Yes, ma'am. Well, huh. Okay, well, there's two different artists. If, you, I don't, if we're talking to the young folks, I'm, I'm going to just uh, act like I'm talking to somebody. I'm not sure if you want me to talk about somebody that older or you want me to talk to somebody young oh no what I was what I was saying like a say like a younger sister wanting to get into the industry oh, exactly. because you because oh, you went you know because you know we know you know you know uh, Cameron you know we know you went through some stuff you went through some challenges oh yeah you know but but oh, you know. yeah yeah well yeah I got you okay well first I would say your why has got to be super strong um and I would definitely say keep good people around you that are honest with you um, because you're going to have so much coming at you and it's a lot of on-the-job training. And and you can really get lost if you don't. And um, so I would uh, be, be spiritually solid and don't, you know, know that it's a lot of sharks. But, you know, uh, anytime you have to do deal with, you know, money, especially being so young, because I would say that, you know, most millionaires in the music business, you know, they... They get riches at a young age, so um, so that's one thing. And then understanding uh, from the part of knowing your craft, studying the great and um, the foundation, like like uh, the history of the thing, as Derek was talking about with Oscar Michelle, knowing the history of the great, you know, the you know uh, Nina Simone and. And then Billy Holiday, and just just really understanding music, and um, especially because in today's world, you know, they're not really doing, especially with the young folks, they're really just doing beats, and and it's not really music. So I would say definitely make sure that you know you do your you do diligence on uh, listening to the artists and having your own style and sound is very important. I believe that's what's been able to you know help me. Um, get notoriety as an artist because I didn't sound like anybody and it's very important that you you know you have your individuality and not uh, it's okay to be influenced and for me I listen to male artists Luther, Stevie, Michael Prince, uh, Al Green, uh, Marvin Gaye these are my influence I, I didn't try to sound like a female artist because you know I wanted to make sure I had my own individuality and then studying, being uh, multi-talented, you know, I went to dance, I'm a dancer, singer, actress, writer, um, knowing how to definitely write your songs, because um, when you're an artist, that's, you know, you, you have to 
put your truth, you're selling you, you and your truth. And I love to mentor artists to, you know, um, give with somebody who can, uh, you know, take lessons and uh, just keep reaching, keep, you know, keep stretching. And, um, and, and, because you never know, especially if you can play an instrument, because it'll only help you, you know, with writing your song. And then just from the business side, it's a new music business. And as I talked about earlier, you know, understanding that it's a lot of work. I grew up in the time where I could have a manager, I could have a, every person had a different job, or, you know, a publicist, a manager, uh, you know, uh, a band, or, you know, it was all these separate people that had accountants, they had all these jobs. In today's music business, you're, you have to be at all. And, and it's, um, so you really have to be well studied, understanding how... The music industry, and, and even for, for artists like myself, as well as even my ex-husband, Terry Lewis, you know, we're, you know, it's a changing industry, so we're kind of like, wow, what's happening, you know, because of what technology, the streaming, and um, so you really just need to understand, you know, where, you know, how to protect your songs, how to write, you know, what, how do you make money, you know, it's, how do you build a fan base? You know, how do you, you know, offer of these social media forms, you know, what not to do? So I want to say there's a book that I'd like to recommend. It's called How to Make It in the New Music Business. Yes, ma'am. By Ari Herstan. And his name is A-R-I uh, Herstan, H-E-R-S-T-A-N-D. He does a phenomenal job. And um, if you want to be in the entertainment industry as a singer, a, a songwriter, I definitely will tell you guys to pick up that book because it is incredible. Well, uh, what I will also, uh, okay, your film, Gale in the Storm, when is it scheduled to be released and where can it be found in the meantime, I should say, advertisements, et cetera, et cetera, websites? Gale in the Storm, bringing back the funk. Uh, it's released uh, released on our platform. We like to call it our Netflix. It's called, uh, what is it, Derek? It's Gale in the Storm on VH. Let me, let me say, it's, uh, yeah. it's Gale, G-A-L-E, and the Storm, dot V-H-X, that's Victor Harold X-Ray, dot TV. And you can rent it for four ninety nine, or you can purchase this for nine ninety nine. But let me say this: everybody who's seen this movie thus far have watched it three to four times. I had a guy tell me he watched it fifteen times. It was such that good. And I want to say this: we shot this movie in seven days, and we spent twenty grand. But I believe, and I claim and predict, this is a cult classic. I really do. And we look into we we, we promote it on our own site. And we're right now in negotiations with a couple other uh, distribution platforms, but we won't be able to do all that right now. Right, but, That's but what we love, what we love also is you can get the soundtrack on um, KarenWhite.me. Oh, K A R Y N W H I T E dot me, and please sign up for my newsletter. Of and uh, you get to know what's going on in my world. And not only that, but I love to inspire and encourage. If you have any questions about this interview or anything regarding, um, I said, you know, drop me a line. And I'm, I'm very friendly and I love to give back. And uh, I believe in community. And, and today's new music business is about cross-pollination of, you know, you helping me and we're helping each other. Because that's the best part. And I know when I go to... Uh, when I, you know, when I go to look for something to buy, I, I go to, like, let me see what this blogger said about this. You know, it's, it's so, I love the fact that I'm not, you know, I don't need, like, a commercial to tell me to go buy this product. So, you know, the world has become smaller, and uh, I just hope that we, you know, will be able to have more great content. And this is just one of the films we're doing. We're working on an amazing idea that you guys are going to really love, this next project that Derek yeah. came up with, and it's incredible. Uh, so we hope that you guys would just support us in our movement. Um, not only just this one, you know, this is bringing back, you know, great black entertainment and... Um, just, it, controlling it, it, the narrative. Yes, controlling the narrative. There you go, Derek. Mm -hmm. Well, that was certainly the tradition of Oscar Michaud and Gordon Parks and the rest of them. But I wanted to uh, go back to something, and I don't want to keep you. Uh, you spoke about the soundtrack. Karen and Derek, from what I heard, these songs that were sang on, on what you sent me, 
The soundtrack is off the charts. Okay, I'm so I was listening to the different music. I look, you know, like I said, I was listening. Trust me, I watched the movie very carefully. I watched it very carefully. You know, I, I must say. But listen up. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We wish you both much success. And also, too, all of you have, uh, please mention your social media pages: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, okay. Derrick, go okay. go ahead first. Derrick, go ahead. Yes. Sir. My Facebook is uh, Derek D E R R I C K Muhammad M U H A M M A D. Uh, I got. I think I got the white shirt on with the uh, Burberry raincoat. <laughs> I like to drop that. I'm just clown, but it, uh, it is Burberry anyway. And then uh, on Instagram is Derek M D E R R I C K M, and on Twitter is comedian Derek. And uh, that's it. All right, and you can find me first and foremost. I would love it if you signed up to my newsletter at KarenWhite.me. Then I don't have to rely on Facebook, Twitter, and, and, and Instagram to make sure you see my post. But you can find me at uh, Karen White Official, and that's Karen with a Y. And you can find me on uh, at Facebook and at, at Karen's World uh, on Twitter. And then Karen underscore, oh, Lord, what is Karen underscore world and yeah, Instagram. Karen underscore world at uh, Instagram. I hate that one because it's so hard to remember. And that's K A R Y N underscore W O R D uh, on Instagram. And but but like I said, uh, mainly on Facebook. I'm, I'm that's really the platform that I'm on the most of the time. If you wanna, if you really wanna catch me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right, uh, Karen White. Derek Mohammed, thank you very much for joining us. I'm Dashaun Farad. You've been listening to Right and Exact. We'll, we hope that you would join us next time. Hotep.